Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Due to YouTube copyright infringement, we only use one picture with voiceover. Thank you for understanding. If you love history and biographies, please leave a like and a sub. Let's start the video. Herbert Hoover, 1874-1964, was the 31st US president from 1928 to 1932 during the difficult years of the Great Depression. Faced with a collapsing economy, Hoover struggled to introduce any effective policies for reversing the Great Depression, and he lost the 1932 election in a landslide to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Before the Great Depression, Hoover had cultivated a reputation for being a very successful administrator and humanitarian. He was efficient and effective in distributing aid to European countries during and after the First World War. In the 1920s, he was one of the most active ministers in Calvin Coolidge's government. However, his reputation as a great humanitarian was forever changed by the huge economic and social costs of the Great Depression which rightly or wrongly were associated with Hoover's presidency. Hoover was born to Quaker parents in a rural part of West Branch, Iowa. Aged nine, he was orphaned and he moved to Oregon to be bro ute up by an uncle. He was brought up with Quaker values of thrift, concern for poor, industry and hard work. He graduated from Stanford University in 1895 with a degree in geology. His first job was working in a mine in California for 10 hours a day at 20 cents an hour. However, Hoover was very ambitious and using his degree and hard work. He soon graduated to supervising mining projects and his skill was rewarded with gaining profitable contracts around the world. In 1900, he was in China at the outbreak of the Boxer Rebellion. Hoover distinguished himself by organizing relief efforts for foreigners trapped in China during a time of hostility towards them. By the outbreak of the First World War, Hoover had amassed a personal fortune of over $4 billion through his investments in mining projects. During the war, he was chosen by the American government to organize relief for Americans trapped in Europe and also relief efforts for Belgium, which was under occupation by the Germans. Hoover used his forceful personality, efficiency, and clarity of vision to organize substantial humanitarian aid, especially to Belgian citizens caught up in the war. Hoover was ideally suited to the task and was a powerful organizer. He was later accused of sharp practices and personally benefiting from his humanitarian efforts. Although, this was not proved he did illegally buy chemicals from the Germans because they were cheaper for his business. Hoover's talent for organizing humanitarian relief was only matched by his capacity for self-aggrandizement. He wasted no effort in publicizing the importance of his work and he was very prickly at any kind of criticism or perceived slight. He personally wrote a letter to the editor of a local newspaper which had questioned his judgment. Also, although he was a great administrator and made a huge practical difference to those reliant on aid, he did not exude personal warmth or empathy. He avoided meeting those who were destitute, preferring to concentrate on organizing at a distance. Hoover was praised for his organizational abilities but struggled to make close connections. One close associate said he could not remember Hoover ever laughing in 30 years of knowing him. However, these criticisms aside, Hoover became a well-known figure in America and a real American hero a humanitarian giant who displayed America's generosity and growing economic power. When America entered the First World War, President Woodrow Wilson appointed him to return to America and oversee domestic U.S. food production. Hoover launched into the project with customary gusto and launched successful campaigns for Americans to have sweet free and a meat-free days so that troops abroad could be fed better with another great success in organization. Hoover was the natural candidate to lead American relief efforts at the end of the First World War. After years of naval blockades, food was in very short supply, especially in defeated countries like Germany and Austria. Hoover led the American Relief Administration in supplying food to millions of people. When Soviet Russia experienced the Great Famine of 1921-23, he also organized food supplies to Russia. 
It was a controversial decision as many Americans saw communist Russia as an ideological enemy, including Hoover. But Hoover countered that with humanitarian aid, the important thing was feeding people and not politics. In 1921, Republican President Harding appointed Hoover to be Secretary of Commerce. Hoover proved one of the most dynamic and progressive members of the Republican administration. At the time, the Republican orthodoxy was one of minimal government intervention and allowing markets to function without interference. However, as a natural organizer and administrator, Hoover turned his attention to new business, such as radio broadcasting and aviation. Hoover was responsible for the first pilot licenses and an attempt to improve the safety of air travel. Hoover also helped to start projects such as the Hoover Dam and First Interstate Roads. He took it upon himself to try and solve traffic congestion, labor disputes, child safety measures, and the price of rubber. His ambition greatly expanded the purview of the Chamber of Commerce. In 1925, President Calvin Coolidge was elected and he kept Hoover in his position. Coolidge was even more of a laissez faire president taking a back seat in government, working only 4.5 hours a day and spending many hours napping in the White House. In the vacuum of decision-making by the president, Hoover became the de facto one of the most powerful people in America. In 1927, the Mississippi Basin suffered a very severe flood with millions left homeless. Hoover was the natural candidate to take on the relief efforts. He organized temporary accommodation and food supplies to those in distress. When Coolidge decided not to stand in 1928, Hoover was a natural candidate for the Republican Party, though he was considered quite progressive by the conservative standards of laissez-faire, typical of the Republican Party. Despite his progressive politics, he was still relatively conservative and also was a keen supporter of prohibition, despite evidence it had led to a growth in organized crime. But, given the prosperity of the past eight years, Voters were keen to elect another Republican and in the 1928 presidential election, he won 21 million votes to rival candidates 15 million. The Electoral College was an even bigger majority, with 444 electoral votes to 87.AS president. Hoover attempted some progressive changes. As a Quaker he was concerned with prison reform and sought to improve educational opportunities and conditions for prisoners. He also had a long-standing desire to pursue military disarmament. Hoover was a strong voice for international disarmament at the 1930 London Naval Conference. In the 1920s, Hoover had actually warned about the dangers of the booming stock market. He was concerned about the practice of buying shares on the margin and was concerned the bubble would burst. When the stock market fell in 1929, he was somewhat aware of the danger this posed to the economy and sought to reassure the public everything would be fine. As the situation deteriorated, he sought to introduce policies which would offer some relief. He launched infrastructure projects, government-supplied capital, loans for agriculture and a government-backed mortgage scheme. However, although he worked very hard and had good ideas, the efforts were completely inadequate for the scale of the Depression. In 1932, 500 medium-sized banks went bankrupt and the money supply fell drastically. In these circumstances, Hoover's policies amounted to little more than tinkering at the edges. He also made another critical mistake with signing the protectionist Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act in 1930. It raised tariffs on many imports and had political supporters in the U.S. But, it was criticized by economists for its likely effect on reducing international trade by even more. With unemployment of 25% and three years of depression, Hoover became associated with the failings of the U.S. economy. Camps of homeless and unemployed men on the edges of cities became known as Coovervilles. In 1932, he authorized General Douglas MacArthur to evict former soldiers in a camp near Washington who were campaigning for a war pension. The army response and brutality towards its former impoverished soldiers reflected very badly on Hoover. 
The 1932 election saw Hoover roundly defeated by Democratic candidate Franklin D. Roosevelt. He lost the popular vote by 23 million to 16 million, and lost all electoral votes except a few states in the Northeast after his election defeat. He was deeply embittered claiming the media had launched an unfair smear campaign against him and that the Great Depression wasn't his fault. He died on the 20th of October, 1964, following internal bleeding. He was 90 years old. Only second US president to make 90 years at the time.